in yes. store for those that yes, love Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And that song that the kids sung this morning, yes. I didn't tell Brother Tyler what I, the subject I was going to talk on for a few minutes this morning. Praise God. <clears throat> but the lyrics Praise to that God. song says, Life is swiftly passing by. How true that Amen. is. Amen. True. There are many things I need to do and say. Yes. Come on. And as I've often wondered, yes. If the roll is called up yonder, Praise God. have I done enough for Jesus today? Amen. And after all is said and done, yeah. and my appointed time come has come, yes. I God. can't beg, steal, or borrow come on, say it. one more tomorrow. Amen. You hear those words? Yes. So I better get ready for Jesus yes, Lord. Yes. today. Yes, Lord. Yes. No, I can't beg, steal, or borrow. Amen. One more tomorrow, Amen. so I better get ready for Jesus yes, Lord. today. Yes, Lord. He goes on to say, Time won't stand still for any man. Come on. And you know, it seems like time is on the run. Yes, sir. Sure and can I truly say Come on. that I've done enough today if today would be the day? that Jesus comes. Think about that. And if I turned away, I would have no more chances to pray because I can't beg, steal, or borrow Amen. one more tomorrow. Amen. So I better get ready for Jesus God. today. The Lord. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Death is something that none of us like to talk about. We don't like to think about it. Come on. But sooner or later, they're going to pull the sheet over our face unless the Lord comes first. Right. True. They're going to pronounce us dead. Come Amen. On. Come on. And they're going to take us and they're going to <clears throat> do whatever they do to us. And yes. They're going to take us to the funeral home. And Come on. Come on, preach. They're going to put us in a coffin. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. And at that moment, there will be no more tomorrows in this life for Amen. you. Amen. That's true. There will be no more chances to pray. There will be no more time for you to make things right. There will be no more opportunity for you to do those things for God that you should have done. Those of you out there that haven't accepted yeah. Jesus, you will be out of a chance to pray. Amen. You will no longer have another opportunity. Today you have an opportunity. Right. Today is the day Amen. of salvation. Amen. Today you can call out on the name of Jesus. But tomorrow may be too late for you. Amen. Amen. Go with me to the book of Luke, the 16th chapter. Luke, the 16th chapter. I want to talk to you this morning for just a few minutes, not very long. God. On the subject, the Lord. if tomorrow never mm -hmm. comes. All right. If tomorrow <coughs> never comes. Come Most people today live their life as if yes. they're going to be here for an eternity. Come on. Most people when they talk about death, yep. they certainly believe that there is death, but they think that for them it's a long way off. Come on, tell us. That they have plenty of opportunities left to do the things which need to be done today. And I realize we must occupy until He comes. Yes. People must work. You must have jobs. You must work. You must take care of your family. There Come are on. things that we have to get done. But the most important thing to get done in this life yes. is to make sure you are prepared today should you not have a tomorrow. Oh, Amen. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Come on. And I'm not talking about laying up treasures in your bank account because once you're gone, somebody else is going to get that anyway. That's right. I'm talking about making sure that your heart and your soul yes, is right in the sight of your Maker. Amen. Yes, I'm talking about that if today should be your last day on earth and if tomorrow should never come for you in this life, are you ready to stand before God? Oh, Amen. Oh, are you, do you have a oh, peace in your heart today knowing oh, that Jesus God. Christ is your Lord and Savior yes. and you rest upon His oh. finished work and you're ready to meet God Amen. should today be your last day. Amen. Oh, yes, sir. Come on. 
wrong. Brother Billy. As I said, most people today, when you talk to them, it's all about what they have to do. Right. They're working hard today so they can enjoy it tomorrow. Right. They're making money today so that they can spend it tomorrow. Come on. They're borrowing money today so they can spend it today and don't have to worry about paying it back till tomorrow. Amen. All right. Amen. Caught up in the pleasures of this world, never thinking that today may be their last day on earth. We find such a man in Luke the 16th chapter, and we've all heard this, we've read it, we've heard it preached by preacher. After, we don't hear it preached so much anymore. Right. Amen. That's true. You know why? Because it talks about a place that preachers don't like to talk about no more. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Well, we find a man here, a rich man. Actually, we find two men, a rich man and a beggar. Yeah. Now, regardless of what those folks that come to your door with their watch tire tracks tell you, this is not a parable. Mm. Amen. Come on. Regardless of what your learned men of great degree tell you, this is not a parable. Right. Amen? Amen. Jesus gives a specific name here yeah. to this beggar. Right. The Bible says in Luke 16 and 19, there was a certain rich man yeah. which was clothed in purple and fine linen mm. and fared sumptuously every day. That means luxuriously. He had the best of clothes. Right. Amen? None of these goodwill rags for him. Amen? He bought all of his clothes. He didn't, he didn't even buy them off the rack. Probably he had them made to, in today's world. He would have had them all made by his own personal tailor. Come on. And there was a certain beggar. Now look at the contrast here. Yeah. In verse 1 we see a man that has need of nothing in this world. Come on. He has every possible luxury that could be known to man at the time. Right. His clothes are beautiful. Come on. He is arrayed in fine uh, clothes every day. He has the best of food. He is lacking for nothing as far as material things go. Come on. Oh, but there is a great lack in his life. Right. And we'll find that out here in just a couple or three verses. Amen. The most important thing, listen, this man may have worked for his wealth. I don't know. He may have inherited from daddy, but he may have worked hard, Brother Dave, for his wealth. Amen. Making the right investments, working hard, however he got his money. Right. If people sat back and looked at this man, they would think, now there's a successful man. But we would find out just a few verses later just how big a failure his life really was. Mm -hmm. You can work your fingers to the bone. Right. You can have your bank account full. You can live in the nicest home in your town. You can wear the nicest clothes and drive the nicest car and be the biggest failure that's ever stepped on planet earth. Amen. That's true. Because you left the most important thing undone. Right. You were so busy mm -hmm. today right. looking forward to your tomorrows that you left out the important fact that tomorrow for you may never come. Amen. And the most important thing, Brother Rodney, if you die today, the most important thing today is not what kind of car you drove, yeah. not what kind of money you had, not what kind of clothes you had on your back. I wish I could get about a half a dozen of them prosperity preachers in here and lock the door and preach to them for about six hours on this. Amen. Uh -huh. The most important thing today is not how the Bible says if a man gains the whole world and loses his soul, what profit is it to him? Come on, preach. No profit. Right. If you gain the whole world That's right. and lose your soul right. because you've left the most important thing undone. Yes. Amen. So we see a man who has need of nothing and then we see another man. Yes. Right. The Bible says in verse 20, and there was a beggar, a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Now we see how the rich man fared sumptuously every day in fine clothes no doubt Lazarus laid there in beggar's rags right. day after day. True. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Yeah. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Amen. I want you to notice this morning how it doesn't say that he laid there desiring the riches of the man. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say he laid there desiring the fancy home yeah. Yeah. or the fancy, see, the, the fancy clothes did not impress him. Come on. 
He just laid there desiring and longing for the crumbs right. which fail. It doesn't say he desired the riches. It doesn't say he desired the position. It doesn't say that he desired all the things that the rich man had. Yeah. It just says he simply desired or he would be satisfied with just the crumbs. Just enough to meet his needs. Maybe he didn't desire the riches that the rich man had because he had seen what it had done to the rich man. Think about that today. Amen. You see, more times than not, you don't got the money, the money got you. Right. Amen. Come on. When you strut around in your $5,000 Armani suit and you brag of your home in Florida mm -hmm. and you brag of your mansion in Connecticut and you brag of your six automobiles and your three motorcycles and your speedboats, right. I got news for you. You ain't got the money. The money's got you. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I can preach this morning. Oh, yeah. Your money bags have you some weighted down. If the rapture took place today, it'd take you 15 years to get away from all your money. Come on, preach. Because you are so connected, loving the things of this world. Yes, Lord. Now, this in no way yes, Lord. means that the rich man... Let me reword that. I'm in no way saying that being rich causes you to be a sinner. Nor does being poor or going through poverty cause you to be holy. Right. But there's a reason that Jesus said it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Because the more we have in this world, right. the harder it is to let it go. Yes. And this rich man, we find him working hard today. Amen. Laying up treasures today. Right. Taking no thought of the fact that tomorrow may never come for him. Because sooner or later, this life will be over. And when this life is over, you will have no more tomorrows to rely on. So if you're out there today, and you're working five days a week, six days a week, seven days a week, laying up treasures today because you want to enjoy them tomorrow, Stop and think about the fact that tomorrow for you may never come. Today the beggar man lays at the gate, hungry for the crumbs which, that would fall from the rich man's table. But what about him tomorrow? Today the rich man fared sumptuously and ate the finest of food. Too stingy to even give the crumbs. You know the fact that the Bible says that the beggar desired the crumbs means that he wasn't getting the crumbs. The rich man too stingy to give him any of the crumbs. Today the rich man fares sumptuously. He has the best of food. He has the finest of clothes. He has the best home. But what about tomorrow? What if your appointment with death is tomorrow? Today you spend all of your time working. Today you spend all of your time on yourself. But what about tomorrow? Let's look at the tomorrows of these two men. The Bible says in verse 22, And it came to pass, and it will for all men, sooner or later this will come to pass for you. If the Lord tarries, and we don't go by way of the rapture. Sooner or later, we're going to be dead. Yes, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. You see, death has no, death is no respecter of persons. Whether you're a rich man, whether you're a beggar, whether you're a king, whether you're a pauper, whether you're Republican, whether you're Democrat, sooner or later you're fixing to die. Yes, yes. Amen? Sooner or later we're fixing to die because death has, death has no respect to person. And the Bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die. But after this, the judgment. Amen? So we find here that today the beggar Lays in rags, desiring crumbs. But that wasn't the most important thing. We find here that today, the rich man fared sumptuously and was clothed in the, the best of, of clothing and had the best of food, but today wasn't the most important thing. The question today is not 
whether we're going to die. The question today is when. Because we miss a lot of appointments in this life, but we won't miss that one. Sooner or later, death comes knocking on the door of every man. Now we already know that whenever Lazarus died, the Bible says that he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. So we know that there was something besides the riches and the poor part that was different between these two men. We know that even though the beggar lacked the material things of this world, that he did not lack when it came to the spiritual things. We know today that even though today if you looked at it, you would think, well, he's got one pitiful life. He doesn't have anything. And you looked at the rich man and he thought he's got it all. The truth is exactly the opposite. The rich man, in essence, though he had material things yeah. that thieves could come in and steal and moths and rust could corrupt, he had not taken care of the most important thing in his life. Amen. So when death comes knocking, yeah. when tomorrows are no more, right. I don't know this rich man's heart. Maybe he thought, sooner or later I'm going to do better. Yeah. Tomorrow I'll do better. I know I'm wrapped up in this now, but tomorrow I'll do Later on I'll do better, but his tomorrows would cease to be. Amen. That's right. His tomorrows would cease to be, and we would find him. Now we find death knocking on the door of both of these men's hearts. Right. The beggar dies, and he's carried by the angels of Abraham's bosom, so we know where he went. Yeah. <clears throat> where did this rich man go? How's his money going to help him now? Amen. What about his stature in life? What about his position in life? Didn't those count for anything? No, they did not. When you stand before God, He's not going to ask you, David Fentress, let me see your checkbook and see how much money you had. Amen. Bring up some photos of his home and let's see what kind of a house he lived in. Yeah. Let's see what kind of vehicles he drove so that we can hand out rewards. No, 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 no. All of that is temporal and fleeting and will mean nothing to you if tomorrow never comes. Amen. That's the truth. So let's see about this man that in the eye of the beholder in this world had everything. Yeah. The Bible says the rich man also died and was buried. Right. And the next verse, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, yeah. if you have not put your faith in His finished work, this next verse mm -hmm. should rattle you all the way down to the core of your being. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Right. Regardless of what men think today, regardless of how important it is, seems to, or how not important it seems to be to the prosperity preachers of today that say they don't go there on this subject. There is still a hell. Amen? Amen? There is still a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. There is still a fire that cannot be quenched. Amen. There is still a place where the worm dieth not. There is still a place. You don't read in here nowhere where it says heaven is enlarging itself. Come on. Amen? Come on. But hell has enlarged itself exactly. because of the wickedness and the disobedience and the sinfulness of man. That's right, brother. Hell is still real today. Yeah. I know you don't want to think about it. I know that your preacher has explained it away and how that it's not a real place and how it's just fictional and how this is just some, some, some parable that Jesus yeah. taught. No, hell is still real today. Amen. And not only is it still real, Jesus stood there before those people some 2,000 years ago and told of this account and I got news for you. 2,000 years seems like a long time to you, don't it? Yes. That rich man is still in hell today. Amen. All because he planned for tomorrow, but tomorrow never came. Amen. His time ran out. Absolutely. He had no more chances to pray. Amen. Amen. His time was a... There would be no altar call in this place called hell. Right. Maybe this man had heard someone cry out the message, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Come on. And he ignored it. Yeah. Maybe he had heard some of the stories of the Bible from the, from, the, from the history at that time of how God had delivered His people and how that God was the Savior and how that God could bring you out and that you're supposed to have your faith in Him. Maybe he had heard those things and thought one day, yeah. Someday, tomorrow perhaps, 
No more tomorrows for Him. Amen. Not in this life. Absolutely. No amount of prayers now that this man was in hell could deliver him from this awful place. Yes. If you're out there and you're spending your time praying for the dead, stop because you're wasting your time. Amen. The Bible says as a tree falls, so shall it lie. No amount of prayers could get this man out of this place. That's right. No payment to be paid to the pious church of the day could get them, could get him out of this place. Amen. Because now he's out of tomorrows. Now he's ran out of chances. The same thing will happen to you one day. Right. One day you will have no more tomorrows. Amen. One day I will have no more tomorrows. That's right. I've talked to people all throughout my life. They'll get right later. Yeah. They intend to come to church later. When they have time. But what happens when time runs out on you? Amen. I stood yesterday afternoon and talked to a couple of ladies and and they were talking about a couple that they knew. And they were talking about how well the, how, how the man worked and how that he provided for his family. And yeah. all that's great and good. Wow. They'd already told me that the family was not saved. They didn't go to church. They didn't live for the Lord. They were not born again. Yeah. And one of the women, and I know she didn't mean it like this, but this is what she says. She, whenever they were talking about him taking care of his children and making a good home and mm. providing for them, she said, well, that's the most important thing. No, it's not mm. the most important thing. Amen. Should you provide for your family? Yes. Should you work to provide for them? Should you take care of your children? Absolutely. Uh -huh. But the most important responsibility today, Daddy, that you have on your shoulders is to be the spiritual leader of your family that you're supposed to be. Amen. When you stand before God, broken, undone, and lost, yeah. The fact that you took care of your family will not win you interest in the in, entrance into heaven. What happens when your tomorrows run out? When you're so busy with school today so that you can have the better job tomorrow? When you're so busy with your work today so that you can have more stuff tomorrow? What happens when tomorrow never comes for you? Amen. That's what's happened to this rich man. Right. All of his plans now mean nothing. No doubt he planned things. He looked down the line and he knew he had money. He knew he had plans. Right. But now his plans meant nothing. He had spent his entire life and left the most important thing undone. Come on. Now in hell he lifts up his eyes, crying out for mercy, pleading for just a drop of water. Lord, I'll even take it off of the finger of that old filthy beggar that laid beside of my gate that I wouldn't give the crumbs from my table or the time of day. Now, let him bring his old filthy hands down here with just a drop of water and touch the tip of my tongue. That's what kind of torment I'm in. Come on. And all of this because he was ready today as far as temporal things and the wealth, but he was not ready for the eternity of tomorrow. Amen. That's true. What about your life? What if tomorrow for you never comes? Are you ready? To meet God. And you can go on and read the rest of that account. How that once he finds out he's there and he's there forever, he begs, <laughs> please go send somebody to tell my family. Amen. Tell them to get ready today because they may not have any tomorrows. Right. Warn them of this wicked place, this terrible evil place of torment. I don't want to be here and I don't want them to come. Amen. Go and tell them. I guarantee you. He didn't want... He didn't want some tiptoe through the tulips. Right. Every everything's creased, everything's fancy. He didn't want that kind of preacher to go to them and tell them your best life right now. Mm -hmm. Pat them on the back and say you're doing okay. Just have positive thoughts. Yeah. No, he wanted somebody, some way, somehow to go tell them there is a hell, and if yeah. you don't get ready today, tomorrow may be too late for you. Amen. That's what I'm telling you today. As you listen across the airwaves of radio, as you watch this video, as you listen to this on CD or tape, right. tomorrow may never come for you. Right. Oh, I beg you, please get ready today. Amen. Get ready today. That's right. We find another rich man in Luke, the 12th chapter. Yes. 
Luke the 12th chapter. Now this is a parable. The Bible says in Luke 12 and 16, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. <clears throat> and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Now listen, he's making plans. Right. I know many of us out there, many of us today make plans. And I'm not telling you there's, any, I'm not telling you there's anything wrong with making plans. Amen. Amen. Right. We say things all the time like, Lord willing, we're going to do this. Right. Lord willing, we're going to do that. So you can't just sit somewhere and say, I ain't going to make no plans. I ain't going to think about nothing. I'm just going, this is it. We're not talking about that. We're talking about making plans and leaving the most important thing in your life undone. Right. We're talking about looking forward to tomorrows that you don't know that you that whether you even have tomorrows or not. Exactly. And not being ready if you died today. Absolutely. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. He thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room to where to bestow my fruits. Yeah. You see, today he was prosperous. So much so that he didn't have a place to store it all. Right. Today he had the world by the tail. Right. Today he had big plans. Come on. Today he had no thoughts of eternity. Amen. We don't hear him saying anything, but what if tomorrow never comes? Right. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns. Listen to these plans. Yeah. And build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Amen. I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods. Listen to this. Yeah. Laid up for many years. Mm -hmm. Amen. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Right. He thought, all he thought of in his life was, I've got a plenty to last me for all my tomorrows. Yeah. This man would not have a tomorrow Come in on. this life. Amen. If you sat back or if he was a friend of yours, you would think, well, he's really got it all. Yeah. He's so prosperous, he's tearing down, he's going to have to tear down his barns. Mm -hmm. Going to have to build bigger ones. Yeah. He ain't going to have to worry about nothing for years to come. Mm -hmm. He would have no years to come. Right. He's not going to have to worry. He's, he's did everything today. He don't have to worry about tomorrow. Oh, but there's the mistake. Yeah. Come on. It's the fact that he may not have any tomorrows that should have him concerned to make sure that everything is right today. Amen. So no doubt if you came from his house, you told your wife, he's, well, John is really doing great. Yeah. He's going to tear down. He's even asked me to help him. He's going to pay me some money to help him tear down his barns, yeah. build big ones. He don't have to worry about nothing. Oh, I really envy him. Yeah. You wouldn't in Amen. a minute or two. A lot of people envied the rich man. How many people you think walked by Lazarus that laid there at the rich man's gate and envied him? Mm -hmm. How many people do you think thought, I'd really like to be that guy? How many times have you drove the streets of Owensboro and saw somebody standing on the street corner with a sign that says homeless will work for food? And how many times have you thought, I really want to be that guy right there? Yeah. Think about it. <laughs> I really want to be, we were in Pizza Hut one night and we heard, overheard a conversation. A man came in and he said, I haven't had nothing to eat. And is there any work I can do for some food? Yeah. By the time we were able to get out, he was out here, out there, he was gone. Or he could have had, we had enough left over to feed two or three people. <coughs> but they told him, no, it was against policy. They couldn't do anything like that. Mm -hmm. They throw away enough food. Yeah. Amen. To feed people. Listen, you hear what I said? Amen. We wouldn't need soup kitchens. We wouldn't see people standing on the street corner holding up signs saying they need money to feed their family. Amen. If restaurants didn't throw away as much food as they do. Amen. 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 But I didn't sit there that night thinking, you know, I wish I was that guy out there not knowing where his next meal's coming from instead Amen. of sitting here at this table eating this pizza. Amen. Nobody envied that beggar. Right. Everybody envied that rich man today. Amen. But tomorrow, if they could see in the spirit world, nobody would envy the fate of that rich man. Yeah. Everyone would envy the fate of the beggar. Yes. This man right here, although he had plenty of things in this life right. to be coveted, his eternity was not anything to envy. Amen. He's already said, I'm going to tear down, I'm going to stock it up. I'm for many years, Brother Dave, many years. Yeah. And maybe this man didn't, he, might, he probably didn't have a health problem. Healthy as a horse. Yeah. And he thought, i got many years ahead of me. Right. Plenty of stuff here. I don't need God. Right. 
That's what a lot of people think today. Amen. If they really believed they needed God, they would find them a church house and be faithful. If they really believed they needed God, they'd get a hold of them a Bible and find them an altar in prayer and say, God, I need you. Amen. But they don't need God today. Absolutely. But they will tomorrow. Amen. If their tomorrow is eternity, True. they'll find out then how much they needed God. Right. Listen. He said, I will say to my soul, soul thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Yeah. But God said unto him, thou fool, this yeah. night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? All right. Then he says, so is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is right. not rich toward God. True. So are you today Amen. if you spend your entire life and leave this undone. Amen. Because when tomorrow never comes, this will be the most important thing right. you could have done in your life. Amen. Belshazzar one night would decide that he was going to have a big party. Yeah. Go get all the golden vessels from the house of the Lord. We're going to use them. Gold and the silver. We're going to drink our wine out of them. Mm. We're going to spit in the face of the God of Israel and defame His instruments. Mm. No doubt Belshazzar thought... <laughs> I got plenty of time. Yeah. I got plenty of tomorrows. I've got plans. I'm going to do things. I'm going to conquer. Come on, preach. That night, as he drunk out of the vessels from the house of God, mm -hmm. a hand would appear over against the wall and write his death sentence in blood. Amen. He had big plans. Tomorrow he would be dead. Yes. Today you have big plans. Tomorrow you may be dead. That's right, brother. Say, preacher, you're trying to scare me. I wish I could. Amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you need to be scared because you're fixing to split hell wide open exactly. unless you take care of that. Absolutely. But I'm too busy. Oh, nobody's too busy. Not for that. Right. You better slow down. Stop and take care of the condition of your soul. Amen. How about Pharaoh? God was a little more merciful to him at the time. But he, would, he had his death grip on God's people and wouldn't let him go over the Rodney. Yeah. And frogs had taken over the place. And as Moses stood before him, Pharaoh said, take away these frogs. And Moses said, we'll do it. And Pharaoh said, but do it tomorrow. Right. Pharaoh and his tomorrows. You and your tomorrows. Right. But what if tomorrow never comes? Amen. There are multitudes and multitudes in hell right. choking on those words that they said in their life. I'll get ready tomorrow. Right. I'll do. I'll live for God tomorrow. Amen. But tomorrow never came. That's right. Tomorrow never came. The Bible says, and I'm closing, in Matthew 24, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. That's the way it is today. Yes, sir. Living and drinking and having a time. Amen. Never thinking about the fact that the flood may come tomorrow. Death right. may come tomorrow. Oh. Time may be up tomorrow. Oh. All the tomorrows you're planning for today may never come. Come oh. on. And the most important question will not be how successful you were in this life. Right. The most important question will be how did your soul stand with your Maker? Right. Where was your faith? Amen. I know death is something we don't like to talk about. We always live as if it will happen to somebody else besides us. Right. And if it does happen to us, Brother David, it will be many, many years down the road. Yeah. When in reality, none of us are promised tomorrow. Amen. James says in the fourth chapter, the thirteenth verse, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and right. buy and sell and get gain. Right. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Amen. For ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Yeah. But now you rejoice in your boastings. Come on. 
He says, all such rejoicing is evil. Yeah. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Now listen, you may not have heard it put this way before, but I'm going to tell you to like this this morning. It is a sin. It's the most grievous sin for you to live your life today without being prepared should you not have a tomorrow. Amen. That's exactly what James is telling us here. It is evil for you to rejoice in the fact that I've got many, I've got many days ahead. Uh -huh. When none of us know of tomorrow, he said. Right. There is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen. And there is no greater loss. There is no greater neglect. There is no greater sin right. than to live this life today mm -hmm. and not be prepared should you not have a tomorrow. Amen. Amen. What if tomorrow never comes? Yes. What will be said of your life by God? Amen. Will He say, depart from me, you that work iniquity? Amen. Or will He say, enter into Amen. the joy of the Lord? Amen. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. We all better find time today to make sure we are ready should there be no tomorrow. Yes, the Bible says in Ephesians 5, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Amen. I'm going to leave you with this this morning. I may never see tomorrow. There is no written guarantee. And things that happened yesterday belong to history. Yeah. I cannot predict the future. I can't change the past. I have just this present moment. I must treat it as my last I must use this moment wisely for it shall soon pass away and be lost to me forever as part of yesterday. Oh. I must exercise compassion, help the fallen to their feet, Wrong. be a friend unto the friendless, make an empty life complete. Mm. The unkind things I do today may never be undone and friendships that I fail to win may never more be won. Right. I may not have another chance on bended knee to pray and thank God with a humble heart for giving me this day. Because Amen. see, this is all we got. Amen. Right now. Right. This moment. Right. You may be visiting me at the funeral home tomorrow. Amen. That's Amen. True. That's true. But if you do, rest assured, you may see that old body of clay. But because I have taken care of the most important thing in my I don't live in the fanciest of places. I got more junk and I know what to do with them. When I say junk, I'm not using that just figuratively. It's junk. <laughs> but my heart is right with God. Amen. My soul is right with God. My God. Because my faith is not in anything else than the Jesus Christ right. and He crucified His righteousness. That's where our faith has Amen. to be today. Amen. That's right. Put your faith in Jesus. Right. Live for Him today because tomorrow may never come. Amen. Someone else this morning have something before we go.